still wrong. Yanina, tell us what happened to you on July 10th, 2003. I was with my family, uh, my mother and my two brothers. We were um, out grocery shopping. Uh, we were getting ready to go to my um, cousin's quinceanera up north. And on our way back home, um, we saw a man um, crossing the street and he approached our car, but he pulled out his gun. And as soon as he pulled out his gun, uh, my mother knew um, something was wrong. So she attempted to escape and drive away. But unfortunately, he pointed the gun in the car and he shot both my mother and I um, at point blank range. And I was shot in the stomach. And because of that, I was in the hospital for a month and a half. And what happened after that? After you left the hospital, what happened after that? After that, I was able to spend about two, three weeks at home before starting high school. Um, I was given the opportunity of whether or not to start high school, but I wanted to really get back on my feet and get back into the real world because for a long time I couldn't even sit in a car, watch people cross the street, or hear loud noises, so I was very scared to go outside, but I knew that if I wanted to play soccer again or just hang out with my friends, I had to get over the fear of life and just being really scared of of people. So I enrolled in um, high school uh, my freshman year, but um, my whole freshman year because I still had um, a lot of repercussion bandages and I would have to get them changed at school, um, it was very hard for me. I had to wear really large sweaters, um, cover myself because I had a colostomy bag and um, I was very embarrassed of myself. Um, so most of um, high school was really hard. I was, at least for the first half of my freshman year, um, in and out of the hospital because I had um, a really large surgery. So half of my freshman year, I was at home resting and rehabilitating. And my sophomore year, I was able to get start again exercising and finally was able to start soccer. I started very slow, but I ended up working my way up to the varsity team, which was really good for me because I used to play competitively for club. So it was, it was really um, inspiring for me to um, be reunited with my old teammates. Can you talk about some of the physical damage that the shooting caused? The bullet hit a lot of my major organs. It hit my bladder, my gallbladder, some of my intestines, um, one of my ovaries, my ureter, and it disabled me for a while. I Because it, the damage was so great, I was bedridden for about a month and a half. Um, I had to have um, my bladder reconstructed and many other organs. So because of that, I was unable to exercise or even um, move. So it was really hard for me just to stay in, in bed. Um, and what was worst of all was I couldn't eat or drink anything. I was fed through an IV in my neck. And just having to suffer through hunger really opened my eyes um, because you always see, you know, those commercials of children um, starving and it doesn't really hit you until you really experience what it's like, the pain of actually not being able to eat or drink water. And it was just really hard for me. But you were able to graduate from high school in four years, mm -hmm. right? So what do you think kept you motivated to stay on track? My family and my friends. Um, without them, I couldn't have done it. They've, they encouraged me to keep going. My mother, like the first time I was walking, was there like pushing me because she knew I could go harder. She didn't want me to let my pain um, prohibit me from continuing. So she would always encourage me to keep going. My friends were always there whenever I needed someone to talk to. They knew um, I was slowly adjusting to life, so they made sure we would go to areas that were safe and I felt comfortable and my old coaches would always come and visit me and my old teammates and we'd talk about stories and I'd go to their tournaments and you know they would always um, do a cheer for me and, and tell me you know they were waiting for me so that really helped me and what helped me the most actually was uh, the district attorney that was in charge of my case I was very scared and I didn't know what to do especially because I had to be confronted with the man that um, inflicted so much pain on me and my family she a stranger I didn't even know she looked me in the eye and told me like I'm here for you I'm going to make sure you're going to be okay and safe and this won't ever happen again and just sitting through the case um, she 
really made me feel comfortable and she really inspired me to stay involved and face my fears head on and because of because of her I've been able to move forward and really be inspired to pursue a career in criminal justice to ensure that children like me don't have to go through what I went through. Tell us about applying to UCLA and what it meant to be accepted here. <coughs> so I'm a I'm the daughter of two Mexican immigrants, so I'm the first in my family actually to be at a university. I didn't really know uh, much of what I was doing. My friend actually who entered UCLA a year before me was the one that was really prompting me to apply to college. Um, he guided me through applying to the SATs and um, writing my essays. He told me who to talk to. I actually had no idea how prestigious UCLA was. I only saw the GPA bar and I noticed that Students with a 4.0 and above were the majority of the campus population. So because of that, I was really intimidated. Um, but my friend, he encouraged me nonetheless, and I applied, and I got in. And when I got in, I actually had to reread the um, acceptance letter three or four times. I was completely speechless. And when I told my mother, we were just crying, and we were really excited. And it just meant the world to me. It made me realize that everything I went through was not um, did not handicap me and my dreams. In fact, it allowed me to become stronger and to be good enough to be accepted to a university like UCLA. So I was very proud and excited to come here. I know you did a lot here at UCLA, but can you name a few accomplishments that you are most proud of? Um, some of the accomplishments I'm really proud of is working with other student leaders on campus to install the deferred payment plan, which allows students to pay their tuition in installments throughout the quarter, especially given the really tough budget situation that we're in, it allows students to make sure that they can pay their tuition um, in whatever way is possible, and it also helps parents who are struggling to pay for their child's education. And I've also been involved with several community service projects, such as Incarcerated Youth Tutorial Project and Mentors for Academic and Peer Support, and I'm just the work I've done with them um, on site, speaking with students, I'm just really proud of. Um, we actually saw, I saw one of the students that we were tutoring at um, the Incarcerated Youth Tutorial Project. Um, he was out and he was, he had a job, he was on the right track to go to college. So just seeing the results of the service we provided was really, um, meant the most to me. Can you talk about finding Islam here at UCLA and your conversion to Islam? Um, when I came to UCLA, like I said before, because of my accident, I was very traumatized and I was very angry and a lot of issues I had were still unsettled. So when I came to UCLA, I was just really looking to find myself. There's so many people at UCLA. It's a beautiful community. I met a lot of Latinos on campus. So I was really excited to finally like have the opportunity just to focus on myself and really get to know myself. And um, my, one of my best friends, the one I was telling about earlier who helped me get into college, he's Muslim. And we've always you know, been good friends. And he's the only one actually that I knew that came to UCLA. So he would take me around. He introduced me to his friends. And uh, I believe in the beginning of my freshman year, there was Islamofascism Week. Um, groups on campus and I believe outside organizations organized a week dedicated to really bashing Islam and saying, really saying a lot of misconceptions about Islam. So I began to get really curious because this is my best friend, like I've known him for years and I've never seen his family act this way or treat women this way or, you know, a lot of things that the media portrays Muslims to be. So I went up to, they had a table saying, you know, ask us about Islam, ask Muslims. So I went and I asked and we just started having a conversation. and. I realized that Islam wasn't <clears throat> very different from what I grew up to believe as um, a Catholic. Um, so I just was very curious and I kept asking questions. I went to the events and slowly I began to realize that a lot of the morals that Islam focuses on, such as treating your family well, giving charity, <clears throat> the importance of public service, really um, excited me and the love they had for you know the prophets before um, from Adam to Jesus um, peace be upon them all and I just it really felt right to me and it's something that Islam really stressed that 
really got me was that education is something important. You have to educate yourself on what Islam's about and in order to wholeheartedly believe it because there's no compulsion in religion. So no matter what someone tells you, you can't, you're not going to believe it. So because of that, it's your choice and it's your um, duty to validate anything you hear and to really get, grow that connection. So because of that, I, um, I ended up converting to Islam. What does this graduation mean to you? It means the world to me. Um, I didn't go to one of the most prestigious high schools, and my GPA wasn't a 4.0, so I was very intimidated coming to UCLA. I didn't think I could make it just because I didn't know anyone. Everyone seemed to have you know connections, and they knew where to go. They knew where to get internships, so I was very scared. But luckily, I w was involved in the academic advancement program, AAP, and they really helped me. I couldn't have done it without them. They were able to tutor me, um, really empower me to believe in my abilities as a student, and I, I managed to get through. Um, in fact, I did better than I thought I would. And just graduating, I feel like I finally accomplished my dream, and it's one step closer to being able to advocate for victims of crime, and also just, I feel like my family is with me and their struggles to come to this country and really try to succeed for for us it has finally come true and I'm just really happy because I feel like I'm graduating with them. What will you do after graduation? I'm actually a, going to be doing a fellowship called CORO which is uh, in Civic Engagement and Public Affairs and it's going to be a nine month fellowship in San Francisco. And after that, what will you do? I'm applying to law school, so we'll see where I get accepted. And what you want to do is work with crime victims. Can I you expand a little bit on that? I want to be an advocate for victims of crime. Currently, I want to be a district attorney because I feel that the work they do is great and also the fact that a lot of the cases when you um, are a prosecutor, you um, prosecute a lot of people of color, and I want to ensure that when, if I prosecute them, that I'm giving them, you know, a fair chance. And also just that knowledge of the courtroom and the law system will allow me to work with um, nonprofit orgs for victims of crime, possibly get involved in policy, ensuring that the criminal law is fair and ensures the rights of victims are protected. Is there anything else that you would like to add? I'm just excited to start. I feel UCLA gave me everything I needed. It pushed me. It gave me amazing friends, and I just love this university. It's my home. I don't think I would have been happy anywhere else.